Taking the Long Way Home episode to Koma Toru 13, featuring some of those bloody rivers again, some of those bloody cliffs again, a toffee lolly being chewed. How exciting, a wicked, crooked spur hut. Me walking away, then walking back. Me buzzing yet again, bloody snow. Two of my besties, and as always, some other shiz. Once again, I forgot to video this. This is the start of Bush Stream. A Bush Stream. I just crossed over just down at the end of that little bluff there, heading up to Crooked Spur Hut. Very basic hut. So it'll be open fireplace stuff again. Had a wonderful time with Wayne from Alts to Ocean. Totally on to a dude. He completely gets Tararoa. He has helped a lot of people. That's where I'm heading. Convergence of streams. Tops, ridges, spurs. Sometimes a toffee lolly is really nice. Just I hope it doesn't rip out any fillings. After a bloody good haul up out of the river valley, I got to the historic musterer's hut, Crooked Spur, and lit the fire, went in search of water because there was none in that container. Written on the outside of the hut are the roll call of musterers. That's from 1966. The next day, up out of there, and on with the trail. What Habby turned up last night, a young American woman. Uh, she's still there, she's in no hurry, she said. She's gonna do some writing, and I'll get up to Royal Hut on to Stag's Huddle tomorrow. <sighs> Got my dry pants on. My pants are staying dry because I put my dry pants on. Kind of cool, eh? top of Crooked Spur. Only a few weeks away from finishing I finally thought oh, I should be putting my camera down and taking some shots of me walking away and then maybe put my camera down and make some shots of me walking toward the camera. These are them. See how these couple of little peaks up there come over the saddle and that's what welcomes you. Hello Bruce, look at us. We're up here, do you want to come climb? Nah. If you look closely up there, there's a hut. That's where I was about to take a break. Helps to sort of make sure the sound is working on your camera when you take these sorts of shots, because I'm sure I was saying something interesting. A shadow of a man with a beard, chewing pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and cranberry. But the view of a valley that a man has just climbed up, and this is the view of the rest of the valley that the man has to climb up. This is the man in question. Hi! I've come from down, right down the bottom there, up that valley a little bit to the left. And I figured I should film this moment. I'm not sure what lies ahead, but I think I am just summiting Stag Saddle the highest point of Tararoa so I figure I should ah 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 <laughs> wow oh yeah I see my sidle on that mountain side along there I go up over this ridge here and sidle along that ridge Look at that, and Tekapo lies off to the left. Thank you, Bruce. I'm thanking me on behalf of me. <laughs> uh, Just came over that pass, that's Stag Saddle. See a little dot there, black dot. That's Abby. Abby who, I hear you say, this crazy young American woman who was walking in sandals. I just went up this ridge here and 
came down I've come down here and look at this low and big hole. <clears throat> Sorry about the sound quality in that previous vid. This is the valley. I came down over that pass, the saddle right up the top there. Climbed right up just under that top peak. And then I've come right down this whole ridline here. Spectacular. About five weeks to go and I should be completed on this odyssey of Tauroa. One day out from Tekapo, the beautiful little camp stream hut. An orange cone, you say? What's interesting about an orange cone? It's not so much the orange cone as the surrounds of the orange cone. Tekapo. This white stuff was not here when I arrived yesterday. And it is here in abundance today. I have a rest day today, or resupply day. I'm going to stay with Mike and Mari. A little abode that they have rented, apparently. Pretty damn spectacular. The exciting part was after this day, I was going to have to walk into the mountains from here. Here are my trail angels extraordinaire, Mike and Mari. So, Brucey, what is going on here? I mean, you're making a big uh, kind of porridge <laughs> here, is it? We're making breakfast for... For the next six days, six to seven days. That so looks absolutely delicious, but <laughs> answer me this, why don't you just take them in their already pre-packed lovely little bags? Because, Michael, we have an environmental policy in the, in the backcountry hut brigade. You take out what you take in. You leave no rubbish. So how much does all this weigh? Look at all this stuff. And You've got to carry it all on your back. I don't know. It weighs too much, is what it, how much it weighs. I felt your pack earlier and it was terribly heavy and I did I, feel very sorry. I think you need a donkey to come with you on this. That's an emergency meal, actually. I've been carrying that for a bloody month, probably. Should I get stuck in a hut? I've only had one weather day in a hut where I've had to stay in the hut an extra day, which means that you have, if you have six days food, and suddenly you have to stay because of a weather scenario, then you've got to eat for seven days. I was saying before, Bruce is still alive. <laughs> He's still 2, alive. 2,400 kilometers. Stag Saddle, just over there. Stag Saddle. I then climbed to a saddle. You could see this sidle along a massive scree slope. And that's not actually where the trail goes, but everyone says walk that ridge because you get the best views. And if the weather's nasty up on the ridge, then you want to get down into the valley. Mm -hmm. But, so I, I went up onto the ridge and there was the woman, this woman, Abby, a young American woman had come up just after me. And I saw her later and she said, oh yeah, you were way above the <laughs> sidle. I got, I got, I was on the scree slope. I actually started to get a little bit, a little bit stressed, not, not stressed, but a little bit freaked out. Because when you're on scree and there's no kind of path of where other people are walking, it'll, the scree slides out from under you. Yeah, I had a fall. I got, she said that I'd gone up above that. So I think I was above 2,000 meters at that mm. point, which felt quite nice. Good, topic. Good boy. When you, when you go to a shop and you look, you think, okay, protein nut bars, cool. Right. How much energy, how much protein, how much carbohydrate? Right, oh, cool. This one will do because it's got the most carbohydrate and the most oh. kilojoules because you want your energy. Well, you've lost a lot of weight, Bruce. Next week, episode Tako Ma Fa 14. Having been spoiled by Mike and Mari on my day off in Tekapo, we're talking hot pools, a beautiful dinner. It was onto Lake Ohau and into a couple of days up in the snow and some pretty hard out effort to get to Lake Wanaka. If you're into doing so, please tell your friends to tune in and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Free Music Archive, Akai Dub, for you and me.